Hi guys, welcome back to the channel and to another video. So today's video is going to be about looking for resources in our system. And by that I mean, if you're stuck somewhere in the terminal and you don't remember some options of a command, I'm gonna show you what you can do with the man pages. The man pages are manual pages that most of packages in Linux come with already pre-installed. So depending on the distribution you're using, you might have already that available to you or not. So in my case, because right now I am on Arch, I need to install one package to be able to use that. Now, if you are on Fedora, CentOS, Ubuntu Server, Ubuntu, you should have already this package installed, but on Arch, it doesn't come pre-installed, of course, so we have to install it manually. So let me type in sudo pacman-s and the package is man, and then hit enter. Now we have two options, mandb and mandoc. I wanna have mandb, that's the one you wanna download. So I'm just gonna select the number one here and accept the installation. And there you go. So let's say we are creating our system and we want to create a user with specific options, but we don't remember some of them. So we have two options that we can use. One is to use man for manual and the command name, which is user add to add users in the system. Now you can see here, it comes on the title, user add eight. I'm gonna come back to the numbers a little later. And we have the name, the synopsis, the description, what the command does basically, and then the options available. You can see here, we have the dash B option and it's gonna tell you what it does. The same goes for the C option, the comment, where you would put probably the full name of the user. We have the D option, the capital D option, and so on. So every option here is explained in detail and it's gonna tell you what it's doing. And if you don't remember some of these options, it's always available with the man page. Now, this one is a long list. You can see we have tons of options here. We can also go down here. We have also a section with the notes. We have also a section here with caveats. So you might not have a user to a NIS or LDAP group, for example, and so on. And we have also here a section of the configuration and more down here at the end of the man pages, we have also the files available and the exit values when you run this command. And we have also here a C also. Now you see also here on this C also, we have uh, several commands and several other things with numbers. So you might ask, why do we have these numbers here in parentheses on these commands? Well, these commands actually are going to show you what actually these commands are and what they are for. I'm going to leave a link in the video description below with a table with all of these numbers and what they represent. But in short, I can tell you, for example, the number one here represent executable programs or shell commands. The number two, which we don't see here at the moment, represents actually system calls. We have also the number three, which is here, for example, under the crypt. This one represents library calls or better said functions with program libraries. The number four represent special files that we don't have it in the list. The number five represents file formats and conventions, like for example, sub UID here. Number six represents games, which we don't have in the list. Number seven is miscellaneous and number eight is very important. It's for system administration. We have also number nine, which is actually not here in the list, which represents kernel routines. So what does it mean? It means, for example, chfn is actually a shell command. It means, for example, user del, it's a system management command, it's an admin command, and so on. So this is good to keep in mind because it helps you to identify what these commands are for. Now, this is one way, and we can use actually the man command with several other commands, like for example, let's type in man df, for example. So df report file system disk space usage, as you probably know. And here it goes on to the description, the switches available in the command and so on. And in the end, we have also here some uh, informations about the author, the copyright, and also some other sections as well. The same goes, for example, with another command. Let's try man user mod and hit enter. So you can see user mod is eight. That means it's a system administration command. Again, we have the description here and the various options with the several switches. Another one is man pass wd, for example, for changing the password. And again, here it tells you what it does, password changes, etc., etc. And we have here all the options. So for example, L, lock the password of the name account. So if you type in passwd-l and then the username is gonna lock the password for that account and so on. So this is one way on how we can check for help when we are stuck here in the terminal. Another way we can check actually for help is to use the dash dash help option, which is gonna give you a smaller summary of the switches and the explanations. So for example, let's type in user add again, dash dash help and hit enter. 
Now you can see here we have a shorter list. Actually, I can pipe this command here with the pipe symbol and I want to pipe it to less, to the less command so that we don't have the full commands available. We can scroll through them right now. So you can see here we have a summary of the switches for the command and a brief explanation. And with the enter key, we can go down here and see at the end of the file that we have all the switches available that we can explore. The same goes, for example, with pass wd dash dash help and hit enter. You can see again, if you're looking quickly for help here, you can see quickly here which switches we have available. So for example, again, the L switch, lock the password of the name account or the dash D, delete, delete the password for the name account or E, expire, force expire the password for the name account and so on. So you have these two basically options to check for help here in the system. So by using the manual pages, so man and then the command that you want to search or you can use also the command dash dash help. Most of the commands have also this option and it's gonna offer you a summarized list of switches available for that command and what it does. Now, another thing to keep in mind, which is very important in the man pages is that in some of the most complex commands, you have at the end of the man pages also some examples, which might help you out to understand also the structure of the command better. So for example, if I type in man, set FACL, which is the command used to set uh, access control lists, you can see we have here the typical man page, so the description. But if I go to the end of the file, by the way, we can search these files like any other file, depending on the editor you have. So in my case, for example, I have Vim here installed. I can hit the forward slash and start searching. Anyway, if you go down to the end of the file here, by hitting control F in my case, you can see we have here some examples. So for example, granting an additional user read access, set F ACL dash M for modify. The user is Lisa and the permission is R on the file named file in this case, or revoking write access from all groups and all named users using the effective rights mask. And you have the command here. For example, the next one, removing a name grouped entry from the files ACL or copying the ACL of one file to another. This is also a very handy command or copying the access ACL into the default ACL. This is also a very handy command. So these you can actually copy them and just change the parameters you need to and paste them into the terminal to run your command. So many of the complex commands in the terminal in Linux have at the end of man pages these examples, which can come in very handy if you are stuck in the terminal. Now, it's very important to know this, especially if you are planning to do a certification like the RHCSA exam, because there you will not have access to internet, you have access only to your man pages. So you just have to know that you have the possibility to use the man pages or use the dash dash help option to have a quicker way to come to the switches and a quick explanation of what they do. So I hope this video was helpful for you guys. And if you liked it, please hit the thumbs up and subs to the channel if you haven't already. Subs always ask me out. And if you want to support my work, you can do so by becoming a patron. You probably already know with my patrons, I do actually a live webinar every month, once a month, where we are focusing on a topic about Linux. Or if you want, you can also donate via PayPal through my website as well. Thank you so much for watching the video, guys. I really appreciate that. And I'll see you very soon in the next one.